Hello everyone, uh, I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible because they just announced some price cut for this awesome CPU which is the i7 Omer, no, Ultra 7 265K and yeah this, this CPU is like crazy value and the platform is also crazy value that is probably correlated to the fact that, that they will not support it for next generation this is like peak Intel but at the same time um, we are running okay I don't have a limpack here maybe on the other side yeah on this one this one is the limpack score at 160 watts power limit so this machine is like insanely efficient when you power limit it to around 150 160 watts it's not as efficient as AMD of course AMD has peak efficiency for 16 cores at around 150 140 watts so I mean, of course, actually, like the peak efficiency is maybe 100 for AMD and 150 for Intel, but you see the, like the runaway effect for this Intel system is around 160 in my experience, which means that uh, you basically stop, like perf the performance benefit stop at around 100, 200, 180, 200, and uh, like, like my, my, my sane value is uh, 160. Uh, let me show you this from hardware info so this has been running um, VT3 for no every sorry every every stress test for four hours one this one has been doing uh, seven hours the cooler is a, a quite cheap one from Bestit um, iTech and we are running the 6400 memory kit that was having so many issues with every other platform and I found that I, this is one of a couple, actually two BIOS version revisions for this motherboard that can run this kit the latest one cannot do that but we'll get to that in a second so let me now stop uh, Y Cruncher and run a quick Cinebench to show you some like high numbers 5000 okay so we're running 5000 Pulling, um, yeah, 170 watts as a limit, but since the bench is pulling, yeah, 169 watts as I, as I set it, and yeah, it's 4000. Okay, you can see that. Let me also run single core in the meanwhile. Um, so, yeah, uh, 170 watt is also near close to the limit for this cooler. With a better cooler, you could probably run it at 180 watts uh, at the same like power. Sorry, uh, so with better performance or get like more performance at the same wattage because you don't run into uh, efficiency problems caused by high temperatures. But yeah, in, in all in all, the, the platform is good. It's clearly good uh, for everything else, the gaming, of course. So uh, let me get this straight. Uh, first thing first, MSI boards are terrible. They don't allow undervolting for some reason. And that is insane because MSI was my go to platform for uh, 12th gen. It was the only one that was able to undervolt the H0 die for Alder Lake. And now they lost to ASRock. So I got the ASRock B860M live mixer Wi Fi because it's the cheapest one that has Thunderbolt, which is like the big plus for this platform. Uh, you have Thunderbolt at the 180 euros price tag, 170 euros price tag, maybe 160 even. Uh, yeah, I think this board is 160 euros, which is a crazy deal. <laughs> it has PCI Gen 5 for the SSDs. So yeah, Thunderbolt 4 and Gen 5 for the main PCI slot, 16X. So yeah, the, 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 the platform value is through the roof. And ASRock allows for undervolting. Um, of course, you can undervolt a lot of secondary rails, which I'm going to show you in a second. This is a single core CPU. I'm going to run Geekbench now, Geekbench now. So let me get to the reasons why you would, would go so for this other platform. Again, uh, main is Thunderbolt for very cheap, very good platform for connectivity, PCI slots and everything. And amazing multi-core performance for the price. So, 
yes, the 9950X is ahead, but it's also double the price for the uh, CPU. And the motherboards, yes, you can run this on a very cheap motherboard, but they don't have Thunderbolt 4. They don't have PCIe 5 on the B6050. So the connectivity is just better on the Intel platform. And here's the other machine for reference. The scores are pretty similar, of course. They are basically the same. Yeah, they, they, they have the same exact components, the same RAM, motherboard, and GPU. These are uh, video editing systems, which is where Intel shines, really. Let's go to the BIOS. And then another thing, the integrated GPU for this is, of course, amazing. As always, Intel has done a great job with the codec support. So you can basically run this for video editing, plug in a very old GPU for like the raw power, the CUDA cores and everything, and then run the video encoders and decoders from the internal and integrated GPU, and that makes for an amazing video editing rig. You can run at very high memory speed. Let me get to the uh, configurations. So CPU here, just the power limit, which is 169. So the BIOS for, for this other motherboard is very hard to read on the settings that you actually pull in, but it's still so much better than the MSI BIOS. The MSI really screwed it up uh, for the generation. Uh, memory support was awful. I couldn't run the 64,000, uh, uh, 6,400 kits at all. They would just crash after 10 seconds of Limpac or White Rancher. While, uh, I, oh yeah, that's the story, into the, into the story. I ended up downgrading this motherboard to 1808 because at, with the 1.11, the memory was also unstable, as it was exhibiting the same exact behavior as every other system I put this memory in, which is crashing after 10 seconds of a Limpac or White Rancher. But 106 and 108 were, are working perfectly stable, even with a slight undervolt, which I'm going to show you. So now, um, the air configuration, everything is stuck because, again, this, mother, this, this memory is not very stable, so I, I didn't touch the vault, the, the, the memory frequencies. And that's also because um, I'm running with a very beefy GPU and it's going to pull a lot of heat in the system and that means that I am don't even bother to lower the TRFI also because this is a like production machine, it's not a gaming machine so I don't want this to crash at all, ever. Now voltages, uh, system agent, this is bot everything here is bottomed out and so you have system agent around 0 0.9 and level 3 load line 128 for the PD2. IOS 115, this, this doesn't go below there. This the minimum, probably can go lower, could go lower. And this is the most interesting part, the VCC IOG and VCC IK. So on this side, on this left motherboard, left system, I had to run it at 096 to, to pass TM5. But now moving to the right system that I have here, uh, this would run it at 0 0.8, which is insane. Like it's a 20% difference, 15%, uh, 20% difference in stable voltages. Let me show you. So system engine is the same, like most voltages are the same. Uh, VDDQ is slightly different. See, on, yeah, on the left is slightly lower. One, It's very hard to read. 133, while on the right is 155, but the VCC IOG is 0 0.85 and the CLK is 0 0.8, so that's huge. 0 0.2 volts difference is a lot. And memory, on this side, I, I was trying to lower the VDD voltage by lowering the CL latency to 36. Uh, sorry, so this is a test that I did, but didn't improve that much, so I'm gonna put it back to 32 because 32 was stable with 1.4, and I only gained 0 0.1 volt by, lo by lowering to 36. So, not good uh, on this side, on this thing. But, I mean, also the performance difference was basically nothing. So, that's a, yeah, that's a trade-off that I'm maybe willing to, to take. And yeah, VDDQ is 136. And the offset for the CPU is set in the DLVR configuration. Uh, this works for sure because it makes a lot of difference in the scores with the power limit set. And it, there's nothing more than I can do than one, minus 100 because of the bias settings. It was it as level 6, that's interesting. 
So the default to the level five. I don't know, but yeah, we'll hit the level five. Let's say, let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, default is level six, so I can move to level five again a little bit more of a performance probably. I will check now. And yeah, my minus one on the left as well, and that is the the, the, the lowest of offset that I can set in this BIOS. Um, I'm also, I'm gonna buy another Azure motherboard next. Uh, I kind of want to try Gigabyte to check the offset voltage on Gigabyte, but Gigabyte boards are of course a lot more expensive for the for Thunderbolt, and all of these machines are video editing machines, so they don't need reliability on the Thunderbolt uh, bus as you would need for an audio system. So for audio systems, I will probably go for Gigabyte because that's usually the one that has the best Thunderbolt implementation in my experience. Um, yeah, I guess this this was a very rushed video because of the price cut that was that happened yesterday, and so you can consider this with platform if you want to do video editing or if you want to do audio at higher buffer size. You don't want to run this for recording at 64 or 32 buffers because the latency of the memory subsystem is very terrible because of the way the chip is built. But raw power to performance to platform. Uh, connection connectivity is just amazing and that's the state of the market we're in and in this, at the same time at, at the current prices intel um, Gig, uh, nvidia and uh, nvidia and, and amd graphics card have this similar value which is also insane what a crazy time to be alive ciao